And when I started drawing, I was, um, I got interested in drawing because I was interested in comics. I started tracing my comics, and from tracing, I started drawing my own comics, creating my own characters, and that's, that's sort of when I really got started getting interested in art. That then translated, I guess, into uh, an interest to, to take up art at the university level, and that's, that's when I started painting. My first degree in physiology, um, I wouldn't say that influences my work now so much as, as assists in it. Uh, the linguistics degree though um, really has influenced my work. I, I think that uh, because of that linguistics background, I view art itself as a language. Being colorblind was always a source of embarrassment. I never told people uh, when I was doing my BFA, that I, my professors or other students, I never told anyone that I was colorblind. I tried to learn co the color theory, I memorized recipes and formulas, and, uh, and I always tried really hard to hide it. I think, I think now, with some more maturity, I came to this idea that being colorblind wasn't a disadvantage. The fact that I didn't see the same as everybody else could be a liberating thing. You know, right after my BFA uh, at the University of Saskatchewan, I, I spent six months in Paris. I had no money. I was, I was uh, living the life of a broke artist. I, I think maybe I was reading too much Henry Miller at the time. I mostly spent my time wandering through the great museums. That really changed my relationship to art because uh, before that I hadn't been to any mu real museums, great museums. This was the first time that I was able to stand in front of the physical object and, um, and I think that's, that's where my interest in fine art really took off. This series uh, that I'm calling Of Centaurs and Men uh, grew out of my last series, which was called A Day at the Met. In that series, I had a number of different human hybrids. There was a, a sphinx and, so, and a satyr and so on, and came to the centaur as uh, an animal that was a perfect representation of this concept that I wanted to examine. There's this idea of, of liminality or a liminal space. Uh, so the idea is, is basically if you have um, a dichotomy, two different things, opposing things, this or that. So the liminal space is, is this tiny, tiny space between the this and the that. It's the space where both exists or neither exists. And I believe that most of our experience happens in that liminal space. So I really wanted to do a show that drew attention to that conceptual space, that liminal space. And I found that the centaur represented that idea perfectly. My proposal to produce my next show will be 10 large-scale paintings based on a single painting. The name of the painting is Nymphs and Seder. Uh, it's by a French painter named William Adolphe Beaujolais. Uh, he painted that painting the year before the first Impressionist exhibit came out. And at the time, Beaujolais was considered to be the greatest academic, French academic painter in the world. So he represents this sort of old vanguard of of um, classical oil painting right before the Impressionists blew everything apart. This uh, upcoming series, my series, I don't have a name for it yet, will be using Beaujolais' template, but I'll be overlaying a hundred years of art on top of, since Beaujolais on top of that.